Hello and what's up guys. So this is going to be part one in a multi-part video series on YouTube regarding how to use the tool Team Filtration. In this part one, we'll cover what the tool is, where to get the binaries, and how to set up the basic configuration file for it. Walking through that configuration file, we will also create an AWS service account so we can get AWS API keys as well as setting up a dummy account in Microsoft Office. Feel free to use the uh, timestamps in the description below to navigate the YouTube videos. So you don't have to listen to every portion of it if you've already done some of it. And uh, with that said, let's just get going. So Team Filtration is a tool for essentially attacking the Microsoft Office cloud, if you will. It specializes in identifying uh, email accounts uh, connected to users within the Azure Active Directory domain, as well as password spraying and then performing some sort of exfiltration operation with that access. And this is very fairly typical and, and there's a ton of existing tooling for performing password spraying attacks as well as enumeration, but none of them really puts everything together in a centralized database or allows you to perform di direct data exfiltration tasks on behalf of the access you gain. And this is what Team Filtration does. So Team Filtration is built on top of a database structure that's called LightDB, uh, which is essentially just the file database on the system. And whenever you do certain tasks within Team Filtration, Team Filtration will store that information in a database so you could use it across the modules. So there's five uh, modules within Team Filtration and three sort of major ones. The three major ones are enumeration, spraying, and exfiltration. And then you have two sort of additional modules for database and backdoor. And we'll talk a bit more about those later. But the enumeration module is, is responsible for enumerating valid email accounts within your target domain or target tenant. And currently, as of recording this video, there are three sort of main methods implemented in Team Filtration for doing this, one of which is specifically effective, which is the Teams enumeration method, where as an authenticated user, you could abuse the Microsoft Teams API to look up ex external accounts and therefore validate uh, emails uh, existing within other tenants or not. Um, and then you have the spraying module, which does password spraying, which is essentially just password guessing. Uh, so you, you take one password and you attempt that password across thousands of accounts and you do that once an hour or once every other hour. Uh, and then, you know, with, with uh, using commonly weak passwords as well as a large enough list of users, as, at some point you will hit the user with a weak password and then you can attempt to access some resources on behalf of, on behalf of that user, right? And then once you get access, you also want to do some sort of data exfiltration, which is essentially the goal of the whole tool is to, to identify users, gain access to users, and then using that access, um, uh, exfiltrate information. Uh, and it comes with built-in support for exfiltrating uh, stuff such as your you Microsoft Teams chats, your OneDrive files, both the ones that you have synced as well as uh, files that has been shared to you from the organization, all your emails, as well as querying information about the Azure Active Directory from the Microsoft Graph API. And that is something really interesting and we'll probably talk more about it in the video series, but uh, the landscape in terms of Microsoft Graph is pretty flat. Uh, once you authenticate to the cloud. So once you authenticate to the cloud, you can pull out every user in the AD, AAD, and then put that back in the database and go back and spray, and then you have a larger attack surface. Um, I suggest w uh, reading the Wiki page on Team Filtration or watching my original DEF CON talk, which you can uh, see above in the little title card, about if you want to learn more about you know, what specifically Team Filtration is and what, what went into the development process. But for this video, we're going to be talking about the configuration file, because in order to use Team Filtration and in order to use key features within Team Filtration, you will need a, a dedicated JSON configuration file. And you don't have to create that config file all by yourself. We have an example configuration file in the repo. So if you go to GitHub slash Flangovic slash Team Filtration and you go over to the releases, you can download the latest releases pre-compiled uh, binaries. And the way this works is that even though this is technically C sharp, it's compiled in net seven and then cross compiled as a single uh, dep um, dependency independent binary that runs on Windows, Mac and Linux. And this might look different, you know, version wise, depending on how all this video is and whatnot. So I'm going to pull down the Windows version since I'm running on the put out my desktop and extract the data. So I'm just going to put that there. Now that's gonna give you the team filtration binary as well as the configuration example JSON file. Let's just open that. I'm gonna open it in Visual Studio Code. And then we can start filling out the properties. So some of these are required and some of these are not. So the required ones are going to be the sacrificial Office 365 account. 
as well as the AWS access keys and secret. Keep in mind that this configuration file might look a bit different depending on what version of the infiltration is at when you're watching this, this video. Current version is 3.5.0. For a more detailed explanation about every single property in the JSON configuration file, you can go back to the wiki, uh, wiki page on GitHub and go to the team infiltration and scroll down. And this, I'll try to make this uh, up to date with the current release and configuration file of team infiltration. So the pushover application key and pushover user key, we can just fill in as blanks. We don't need that. Pushover is a service that allows you to get pushover notifications on your phone through an API service. Team Filtration has this integrated so that when, say, you find a, a valid credentials for an account, you can get a pushover notification on your phone. So you don't have to, so you don't have to constantly stare at the screen waiting for a, a valid login to happen. You also have the dehashed email and API key. This is for pulling uh, emails from the breached uh, database lookup service called dehashed, which can often be used to easily get a list of, of uh, existing emails for a tenant. None of, the, none of those two above services are required in order to use the tool. However, the sacrificial auth 65 account uh, is required as well as the AWS uh, API access keys and secret is required. So let's start off by getting the AWS access key. So in order to get a set of AWS API keys, you first need an account within AWS. So go head over to aws.amazon.com and create yourself an account. I do recommend creating a dedicated account for this usage specifically. I would not do this against a production environment or environments where some other services that are important is running, simply because this is a bit of a gray area in terms of how we are abusing the cloud. I already have an account, so I'm just gonna go and log into that. Once you are logged on to your AWS account, you can go up to the search bar and type in IAM for Identity Access Management. Click the Identity Access Management service. Once you are in here, go to Users and then Add User. Now we are going to create a dedicated uh, service account, if you will, that we will use for uh, getting the API keys and as well as signing a policy. There's probably uh, different ways you can do this, but this is how I know to do it. If you are an AWS expert, Feel free to correct me in the comment sections below or show me any better way to do this. I'm always open to learning. So I'm going to type in team filtration service account. It doesn't need to be that long, but you can do whatever. And then you can attach that to a policy directly. And then you can choose the, there should be a policy called uh, API something something. Yeah, API gateway administrator. That's the policy that we want. And this is going to allow our service account to create and delete Firefox instances, which are API gateway instances within, um, within AWS. Click next. And then we're going to create that user. With the user created, go ahead and click the username, go over to security credentials, and then go down to access keys and click create access keys. AWS is gonna ask you for what this is used for. We're just gonna click other, Go next, give it a tag, we just call it infiltration, it doesn't really matter, and then click create access keys. Now before you freak out, I guarantee you that these access keys are going to be uh, removed by the time you see this video. This is the access key and this is the secret access key. So if you go back to our configuration file, we can copy that access key into AWS access key. And then that secret key, let's copy that into the AWS secret key. And that is how we tell Team Filtration to use this dedicated service account when creating and deleting Firefox instances, both when performing enumeration and spraying. And that's going to be it for the AWS portion. Next, we need to head over to Azure. Now with Microsoft Office, you are going to need a Microsoft, uh, Microsoft tenant or Microsoft Azure tenant uh, in order to create the dummy account that is needed for Team Filtration. You cannot use private MSDN accounts. Those will not work with Team Filtration. I already have an account set up uh, with a dedicated tenant. If you haven't, then you need to go over to Azure and sign up, put in your billing information, all that good stuff. For this specifically, using an existing tenant and just creating a service account is going to be fine. Team Filtration doesn't use this dummy account to abuse anything major, so this should probably be fine having in, a, in an existing tenant. I'm going to log in. Once logged in, I'm going to go to the admin.microsoft.com page, which is going to give me the old school Auto 65 admin panel. 
once at the admin panel you can go to users active users and then add a user let's call this user team filtration oops if i can type and then tmf service let's say give it a password be sure that you give the service account a really really strong password in order for this to work we cannot enable mfa for this account team filtration cannot use this account if mfa is enabled so we need to have a strong password so nobody else gets access to this user account there we go and then go to next then this is a very important step. The account you created needs to have a license in order to access the Microsoft Teams application and the, the cloud resources within Microsoft Office. So the, the cheapest and often free license that I can get away with giving this account is the Microsoft Teams exploratory license. Click that and then click next and then next and finish adding. Now with the account created, we can simply copy and paste these credentials into our team filtration configuration files. I'm going to copy that username and also copy that password. There we go. That should actually be it for creating our uh, Teams configuration file. That's it for part one of this video series. In part two, we'll look at how to get going using Team Filtration, mainly looking at the enumeration module. If you enjoyed this content, please consider leaving a like, comment, and subscribing. I really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day.